So, could we have a big welcome, please, um, for Neil Toner and his perspective? Thank you. Thanks, John, and thanks for pointing out uh, where the emergency exits are, because uh, you never know. Um, I might need them. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. So, like it says on your Twitter page, all views are my own, apart from the very clever ones who are stolen from somebody else. <clears throat> they say the best things come in small packages. Well, they're wrong because the best things don't come in packages at all. That's my boy, Phelan, in the picture. He's eight years old and he's in third class in primary school. There they teach him about the environment and sustainability and such things. They teach him religion too, but I'm not too worried about that. I trust in his wit and emotional intelligence in this regard to the extent that I believe he will make up his own mind in time. I'm more concerned that he accept unquestioningly the quasi-religious tenets of modern consumerism and its doctrines of need and disposability. I made that bit up. Consumerism is the first global religion in human history in which the faithful, that's us, actually adhere to the rules rather than just cherry-picking our favourite Brits. That's not my view. That's the very clever view of Yuval Noah Harari, the historian, from his best-selling Sapiens, Sapiens even, A Brief History of Mankind, published in 2014. Whether you agree with these clever clogs positing of it as a religion or not, it's difficult to argue that consumerism with its promise of material salvation here on Earth, as long as you spend the cash, often offers us a galaxy of choice and yet no choice at all. So teaching environmentalism and sustainability in the classroom is all very well, but outside school in the world of 150 euro Arsenal replica kits made from recycled materials and Fortnite, it often seems there can only be one winner, high octane consumerism and its quick fix drop the books and then chuck it brand of convenience. Again, I hope he has the emotional intelligence and sufficient compassion to reject the senior tenets of the creed. But still, I feel it's my duty among the millions of others that come with parenthood to show him the sort of example I was shown as a child at a time when it was not uncommon to see people fire empty cigarette packets and chip wrappings out of the windows of moving cars in the name of convenience. But consumerism has grown up now and it doesn't allow that sort of thing anymore. And most of the rest of us wouldn't stand for it. If you want what's in the packet, it's your duty to take home the packet too and dispose of it in the correct fashion. And that has become one of the commandments which we obediently adhere. But should we take it home? Many years ago, I lived in an apartment off Cable Street and I used to shop in Aldi on Parnell Street back in the day when you could pick up groceries there for a fraction of the price you would elsewhere if you were willing to take home products with slightly unfamiliar brand names. I was particularly taken by the 12 euro bottles of champagne they stocked. But the best thing about that shop, well, maybe the second best thing after the champagne, was that there was always a huge cardboard box beyond the checkout. And here, shoppers were invited to deposit all of the packaging they really didn't need to take home. And the store would deal with it. I imagine it was less to do with environmental concerns at that time, in that place, but rather that the shoppers are indeed, um, were mostly pedestrians, so they could leave behind the cornflakes boxes and so on, making it easier to pack and carry home their purchases. Um, looking back, though, it made complete sense, cutting out, as it did, several links and middlemen in the chain of misery um, that is the world of domestic refuse. I go to a different Aldi these days, and there's no... Actually... <laughs> OK. That's a shopping trolley. Yeah, as used by the uh, old ladies who used to shop in the Aldi in Parnell Street. Um, I go to a different Aldi, and there's no large cardboard box in which to conveniently deposit your unwanted packaging, despite the fact there seems to me at least to be more packaging than there was 15 years or so ago, notwithstanding or perhaps even as a result as our much lauded levy on plastic carrier bags. How far things haven't come, it seems to me sometimes. <coughs> Leaving your packaging behind is not encouraged there, but I still do it. I'm not the only one. There it is. Uh, but a lot of folks still look on horror at this flagrant breach of the unwritten commandments of shopping. Despite the campaigns and the newspaper articles by journalists a few months ago who claimed to do this with almost universal approval from staff and fellow shoppers. Note the super nutty granola box I've left there at the top of the pile. That granola really is good. It's very good. I don't want the box, thanks very much. 
Meanwhile, the chain of misery I mentioned earlier gets even more miserable every time there's a new change in what you can and cannot put in your so-called green bin. Recently, we were told we could no longer put any soft plastic items in our recycling. All of a sudden, you saw the return of the dreaded black bin. We were just talking about this earlier, actually. <laughs> Containing a pile of this everlasting stuff bound for the ground, the incinerator, or worse, the sea. In our house, we've gone from a so-called black bin every month or six weeks to one every week or fortnight now. And it's distressing. I'm going to uh, try and not get too statistical here, but it's hard to avoid that. I was gobsmacked to find out, and obviously I'm open to challenge on these figures, uh, that we produce a billion kilos of plastic every day globally. That's roughly a couple of skyscrapers worth. That's nothing compared to the 8.3 billion tonnes we've produced in the last 60 years, most of it still knocking around, and some of it being eaten by our kids via particles digested by fish. Mm. I couldn't even find a satisfactory way of reducing that amount to an easily digestible equivalent, save from the clumsy comparisons of its mass being the equivalent of a billion elephants. In 2015, each of us citizens of the EU gen generated the equivalent of at least twice our own body weight in waste packaging, according to the union's own stats. And the more advanced the economy, it seems, the more waste is produced. Depending on who you believe, at least a a as little as 14% of this is being recycled and about a 20th, a 20th of it is actually put back in the system for reuse. Again, I'm open to challenging this with a whole third of it ending up in the natural environment, the ocean reluctantly accepting a bin truck full of the stuff every second, with the result that some say there could be more plastic in the sea than fish by mass by the year 2050. I don't want to be too hard on plastic. Without it, it might not have prosthetic limbs, countless life-saving saving medical devices, vinyl records, bicycle helmets, warm clothing, and so on. But we have proven incapable of using the stuff without making a terrible mess, like the hobby chef who can't cook dinner, usually men, without trashing the kitchen. Am I might be too, this is too preachy, is it? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I, I can't help myself. Uh, and and <laughs> uh, yada, 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 yeah. I mean, in two years' time, it's anticipated by some that Europeans will be consuming 900 billion items of packaged food and drink annually. Um, I, I'm going to skip the rest of this because... Anyway, so what am I going to do about this? Sometimes I really want that 40-day aged ribeye Angus steak from Lidl, and thanks to the wonders of modern logistics and refrigeration, I can have it. But also, thanks to the wonders, the wonders of modern packaging, I have to deal with the heat-shrunk plastic container and the cardboard wrapping decorated with the poetic call to action from the producer, often well-meant, but sometimes veering into the territory of vacuous marketing speak. At home, a sophisticated demolition process is required involving a sturdy carvery knife to get at the meaty deliciousness within, risking limb, if not life, in the process. Thereafter, long after, hundreds of years, thousands of years afterwards, after the meat has yielded up its heavenly umami, although nothing like the aubergines we had for lunch here today. Uh, uh, I have to deal with the notion this package is still going to exist and continue to do so long after I'm gone. Probably sloshing around a coral reef or stuck in a shark's gill somewhere. Of all the tiny ethical decisions around eating that steak, most of which are not in the scope of today's discussions, the most pressing for me and the easiest to deal with in my book is the plastic one. I simply won't be doing it anymore. I'm getting a smaller fridge, one that can't be filled with food items and plastic packaging that go rotten because I've forgotten they're in there and I haven't consumed them. I'm still going to shop in supermarkets, but I can no longer wait for them to get organised in terms of recycling facilities on site or changing their policies on packaging materials. I intend to continue to risk public ridicule by leaving unwanted food packaging behind when I can. Hopefully, more and more people will follow suit. If enough people start doing it, as opposed to doing it as a protest, because it's not a protest, it's just, it's a choice. It's consumer choice, because we are consumers. Consumer culture will change faster in response to whatever the opposite of demand is. You know, and just like the guys who stopped throwing their cig cigarette packets out the window when it became clear that this was no longer socially acceptable. Hopefully things will change, who knows. Anyway, that's the end of me. And I, I, can I just say that the, the, the reason I put my hand up uh, to be here today was 
um, because over the summer we decided that in the autumn and the winter we would do a series in the, uh, in the paper, in the Sunday section, uh, <coughs> helping uh, consumers to, 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 to waste less. Um, so we'll be doing hopefully a series of articles on that and we'll also be trying to do some what they, they now call um, community journalism where we'll be looking for ideas as well from readers on, uh, on, on, on how we can all um, produce less waste in general. So thank you. <laughs> I hope you heard all of that by the way.